Standing on tiptoes does not ensure firmness. Rushing ahead does not lead very far. Attempting to outshine others dims one's own light. These are the profound words of the ancient sage Lao Tzu. They speak to a timeless wisdom that resonates even today in our fast-paced, achievement-driven world. You see, many of us spend our lives in a relentless pursuit of betterment. We strive for more knowledge, more success, more recognition. And yet, the more we strive, the more discontent we often become. It's quite the paradox, isn't it? We're told to work hard, to push ourselves, to always strive for more. Yet, the harder we push, the less satisfied we seem to be. This is a concept that Taoists have long recognized. They've observed the counterproductive actions of humanity, the way we often exacerbate our own problems by trying to go against the natural order of things. We impose rules, ethics and values all in an attempt to improve our lives and the world around us. But in the process, we end up distancing ourselves from the natural flow of life. Imagine trying to swim against a strong current. It's exhausting and more often than not futile. Instead, wouldn't it make more sense to align ourselves with the current, to move with the flow rather than against it? This is the essence of Taoism. But how do we do this? How do we stop trying so hard and start allowing? How do we let go of our need for control and start trusting in the natural order of things? These are the questions that Taoism invites us to explore. So as we delve deeper into this ancient philosophy, remember Lao Tzu's words, standing on tiptoes does not ensure firmness. Rushing ahead does not lead very far. Attempting to outshine others dims one's own light. In other words, swimming against the current is both exhausting and futile. Beyond the dynamic universe, there lies a mysterious force known to Taoists as Tao. This force transcends human perception, yet it can be felt symbolizing the struggle to understand the universe. It's like the wind that you can't see but you can feel, the warmth of the sun that you can't touch but you can experience. In our attempts to grasp the ineffable, we often resort to naming and categorizing. We try to fit the cosmos into our limited vocabulary and mental constructs. Yet the universe, in all its infinite complexity, cannot be confined by our words. It cannot be captured by our theories or equations. It is like trying to catch the ocean in a cup or the sky in a jar. The more we try to understand, the more elusive it becomes. It's like chasing a mirage in the desert or a rainbow in the sky. Our efforts to understand lead us to create deceptive constructs. We build models and frameworks that we believe represent the universe, but in reality, they are mere shadows of the true cosmic order. They are like the reflections in a mirror, appearing real but lacking substance. In our pursuit of comprehension, we often lose touch with the Tao. We get caught up in our constructs, forgetting that they are just tools for understanding, not the truth itself. We become like the man who mistakes the finger pointing at the moon for the moon itself. But the Tao is not something to be understood or grasped. It is something to be experienced, to be felt. It is not a destination but a journey, not a concept but a way of life. It is the path of naturalness, of spontaneity, of effortless action. So let's stop trying to understand the Tao. Let's start experiencing it. Let's let go of our deceptive constructs and immerse ourselves in the mystery of existence. Let's embrace the Tao, the natural flow of life, and find peace in the process. For in our pursuit of comprehension, we often lose touch with the Tao. The concept of Wu Wei or non-doing is central to Taoist philosophy. Imagine a river, its water flowing freely, effortlessly shaping the landscape, yet never straining or striving. This is the essence of Wu Wei, the art of non-doing. It's not about inaction, but rather action without effort. Action aligned with the natural flow of life. Now, take a moment to ponder. How often do we find ourselves pushing against life's current, struggling to control the uncontrollable? We strive, we fight, we resist, yet in doing so, we often create more problems than we solve. This is where Wu Wei comes into play. It teaches us to let go of the need to control, to surrender to the natural course of life. It's about trusting the process, trusting that the river of life knows its way. But how do we apply this concept in our daily life? It's simple. Start by observing. Observe your actions, your thoughts, your feelings. 
Are they in harmony with your true nature, or are they a result of societal expectations and pressures? Next, practice letting go. Let go of the need to always be doing something. Allow yourself to just be. This doesn't mean neglecting responsibilities, but rather fulfilling them effortlessly, without stress or strain. Finally, cultivate mindfulness. Be present in each moment, fully engaged in whatever you're doing. When you're eating, just eat. When you're walking, just walk. Don't let your mind wander to the past or future, but stay rooted in the present. By embracing Wu Wei, we can find peace amidst chaos, clarity amidst confusion. We learn that sometimes, the best course of action is non-action. Remember, it's not about forcing things to happen, but allowing them to happen. It's about flowing with life, not against it. So the next time you find yourself struggling, take a deep breath and remind yourself, harmony is found not through action, but through non-action. Taoist scriptures offer profound insights into the human condition and societal norms. They present a unique perspective on societal reform, the quest for happiness, and the importance of embracing individuality. Consider the case of societal reform. The Tao Te Ching advises against drastic changes. Lao Tzu, the reputed author of this fundamental Taoist text, writes, Govern a large country as you would fry small fish. Do not overdo it. This metaphor suggests that just as small fish can easily break if handled roughly, a society can crumble under the weight of excessive reforms. The Taoist approach encourages subtle and gradual changes, respecting the natural evolution of societies. Now, let's explore the quest for happiness. Happiness, according to Taoist scriptures, is not something to be chased or obtained. Instead, it is a state of being that arises naturally when one aligns with the Tao. Zhuangzi, a seminal figure in Taoism, once wrote, Happiness is the absence of striving for happiness. This paradoxical statement encapsulates the Taoist view that happiness is found not in the pursuit of external goals, but in the acceptance and appreciation of the present moment. Lastly, Taoist scriptures emphasize the importance of embracing individuality. The Tao Te Ching states, The wise man is one who knows himself. This quote underscores the value of introspection and self-acceptance. Taoism encourages us to embrace our unique qualities and to resist societal pressures to conform. In doing so, we can live authentically and in harmony with the Tao. To sum it up, Taoist scriptures provide us with a different lens to view the world. They caution against excessive societal reform, remind us that happiness is found in the present moment, and encourage us to embrace our uniqueness. The wisdom of Taoism invites us to question, reflect, and embrace our true nature. True, the path to Tao is a middle path, one of balance and acceptance. It's not about extremes, but about finding equilibrium in life's natural ebb and flow. This middle path requires us to unlearn many of the things we've been taught and to let go of the societal constructs that have been ingrained in us. It asks us to accept life as it is instead of how we think it should be. Unlearning is a process of deconditioning. It's about releasing the need for control and allowing life to unfold naturally, without interference. It's about recognizing that we are not separate from the world around us, but an integral part of it. This understanding allows us to move with the flow of life rather than against it. In Taoism, acceptance is another vital aspect. Acceptance here doesn't mean resignation or passivity. Instead, it's an active recognition of reality as it is, without trying to change or manipulate it. It's about embracing the imperfections, the uncertainties, the challenges, and seeing them as integral parts of our existence. These practices of unlearning and acceptance can lead to a profound sense of contentment and inner peace. When we stop striving for more, better, different, we create space for appreciation of what is. We start to recognize the inherent value in every moment, every experience, and every interaction. This contentment does not depend on external factors. It's not about what we have or don't have. It's not about what others think of us. It's about being at peace with ourselves, with our life as it is. It's about recognizing that we are enough, just as we are. True contentment arises from embracing one's true nature and relinquishing the need for external validation. It's about being in harmony with oneself, with others, and with the world around us. 
In Taoism, this is the art of not trying, the art of simply being.